hello my viewers my friends welcome back to my channel and this is Mukesh Kumar and this is my second video of introduction to iOS development part one I have already made in which I have started the Swift course for beginners and this is the part two introduction to Swift so without delaying anything let's get started introduction to swift swift programming language so what is swift programming language let's have a look swift is a programming language developed by apple company for ios mac os tv os and watch os app development swift adopts the best of c and objective c programming language means swift is a mixture of C and Objective-C programming language and the best part of that language is imported in Swift. Swift comes with playground feature where Swift programmers can write their code and execute it to see the results immediately. So in later videos I will show you what is playground and what are the features of playground and how do we write the code and execute the code to see the results immediately okay next point swift designers took ideas from various other popular languages such as objective c rust haskell ruby python c sharp etc swift is basically a best of all the languages which we have so swift that's why that is the reason swift is fast modern safe and interactive to use for the programmers so these are the points for swift programming language let's have a look on its history so swift programming language was founded by chris latner in 2010 but publicly it was released on 2nd of june in the year of 2014. first this is this swift version 1.0 released on september 9 2014 later what is import cocoa so just go to where where a equals to 42 i have declared a where a with an int value but later i am entering where a equals to this is hello and then print where a when we compile the above code it produces the following compile time error cannot assign to let value where a where a equals to this is hello right so as we have already uh, declared that where a is integer type so we cannot assign string value right so this is type safety plus point of swift language next we have type inference what does it mean type inference it basically enables a compiler to detect the type of a particular expression automatically like if I am uh, declaring a variable and initializing some value in it, like this is integer value, so it will automatically detect by the compiler that it is integer type. Right? In this case, I am initializing double value, so where we will be inferred to be type double. So this is the type inference in Swift. This is also plus point of Swift language. Next is the type annotation. Type A annotation means when you are declaring a variable and you are also defining its data type, that means you are giving its type A notation. And one more thing the following example shows how to declare a variable in Swift using A notation. Here it is important to note that if we are not using type A notation, then it becomes mandatory to provide an initial value for the variable. Otherwise, we can just declare our variable using type notation means if we are declaring some variable without a notation then it is mandatory to give some value in it otherwise you need to give its type a notation if you are not initializing some value in it right move to next level so our topic now is strings strings all you know the collection of characters meaning have some meaningful sense are the strings so here I am just uh, discussing how do we declare a string variable in Swift language. So where is the keyword? And again, my string variable name equals to hello uh, some value in it. 
and another way to declare giving type annotation in it that's it and how do we declare empty array here it is important that where my string equals to double quotes double quotes means it is representing empty value right but it's always better when you are declaring an empty variable so give its type annotation it's a good practice one more thing uh, i will also discuss strings in deep details in some other video uh, i'm just uh, discussing the overviews here now array what is array array is a collection of similar type of data and all i know you you are aware with the definition array let's move to how to declare an array in swift language so where is the keyword my array is the variable name equals to within the square brackets double quotes some value separated by a comma again double quotes some value comma and so on this is the way to declare an array and also i can give its type annotation data is there in an array so i am showing that a string type of data is there in this array right so there also we have two ways to declare an empty array and in empty of course i have uh, mentioned also that in note that in empty case its data type is necessary to mention so i will also discuss array in details in a single video now the dictionary i guess this might be a new topic for you so i am here describing what is dictionary dictionary is basically used to store value and key in pair but in unordered form what does it mean it means there is there will be no order like in array we uh, when we add values in it so it will be in order means first is at first position second is at second position but here this is an order first can be second second can be first like so and how do we declare dictionary again where or like keyword then dictionary name equals to within the square brackets first is the key in the double quotes like, sorry first name is the key colon abc is the value so this is a pair separated by a comma followed by second value key value pair and so on all right the main difference between array and dictionary is there is a single value in array key value pair in a dictionary and in array it is ordered but in dictionary it is unordered so there is a two big difference and how do we declare an empty dictionary sorry it must be dictionary so here also we have two ways to declare an empty dictionary right note in empty case again it's necessary to mention its data type now the topic is decision making decision making of course you are aware of it there will be if condition or switch condition in if condition we have multiple cases like only if will be there if else will be there if else if else will be there or nested is there so again i am sharing the syntax of swift language of if condition if keyword will be there space expression sorry and within the curly braces number of statements right as an example you can see if a equals to equals to one then something to happen whichever the code is there uh, within the curly braces right next syntax for switch switch keyword will be used followed by the expression and in the curly braces we have different cases and at the last we have default case and every case contains some number of statements in an example as we can see switch row curly braces open case 0 means when row equals to equals to 0 this should happen row equals to equals to 1 this should happen and when none of the values matched with the row default case should happen right so this is the syntax for switch next we have control flow control flow means loops here we have a new loop for in loop the syntax is for variable name in keyword then range this is something new here so as an example we can see for keyword variable name i in 1 to 5 
1 to 5 is the range and i is the variable in which this range 1 by 1 initialized here means when i run this loop the output will be 1 2 3 4 5 because this starting uh, value is going in i and i am printing i then second value then third value then fourth then fifth and so on this way this foreign loop works right next we have while loop in other languages we have already studied but we are having just overview so the syntax will be while then condition in the within the curly braces number of statements so while keyword condition is like i is less than uh, i is less than one curly braces print zero in this while loop when this condition is true this number of statements will be executed right and next we have repeat while loop is the new one but its former name is do while loop of course we have also studies do while loop as well right so here we have only the difference in keyword instead of do there is a repeat works as it is as do while so repeat while loop index we have repeat keyword within the curly braces state number of statements here and after while keyword there is a condition means in this loop once the number of statement code will be executed then the condition is checked right so this is the main difference between while loop and repeat while loop and that's it for now in the next video i will come with another topic like i have discussed all these points in this video till control flow in the next video, I will try to cover up functions, closures, enumerations, structures and classes, properties, optionals, extensions, type casting. But all these are the major topics. So I will cover less and less topics so that we can discuss all these in details. So I hope this video is very helpful to you. I know it was a little bit boring, but very helpful. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. I'll be back in another video. Till then, Shapa Ghar. Bye bye. Wherever I go, wherever I see, I'll remember you. If you remember.